Hey, everyone. It's, it's great to be here. Um, I'm Ido uh, from Blockade. Um, I knew Stellar knew how to build a blockchain. I didn't know they knew how to throw an event, uh, but this is great. Um, so uh, super excited to be here. Um, I guess, you know, uh, uh, we've been working with Stellar for the past couple of months. Uh, we've done some amazing work together, and we'll share a little bit more about that today. Uh, some of that, uh, some new and exciting product announcements. Um, as well as share a little bit more about some of the future stuff that we're going to be working together on, um, uh, and we'll go from there. So before we dive in to you know, some of our work with Stellar, um, I'd love to share a little bit more about Blockade uh, and some of the things that we've been doing in other ecosystems uh, and generally across uh, uh, the space up until now. So Blockade works uh, with some of the largest um, companies in crypto. Right? We work with different wallets to protect uh, them and their users from signing different malicious transactions. Uh, we work with different protocols to monitor their different kind of um, on-chain um, uh, infrastructure and contracts uh, from, other, from all sorts of different types of attacks um, and build different playbooks to respond in real time. We work with different exchanges to um, uh, detect all sorts of different exchange-related scams, uh, as well as kind of monitor their on-chain infrastructure from all sorts of different threats. Um, and uh, uh, we work with different chains to monitor their, their ecosystems, uh, different things that are taking place, all sorts of different scams and hacks that are happening on-chain. And uh, one of those chains is Stellar. We'll share more about that today. So Blockade's on-chain security platform is used by tons of security experts daily uh, to detect all sorts of different kind of um, wallet-related uh, 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 hacks, all sorts of different um, token-related um, uh, scams uh, like rug pulls and kind of uh, honeypots and things like that. Um, we work with different kind of uh, exchanges, as I mentioned, uh, to detect exchange-related scams. Uh, what this means is, you know, uh, um, if you've heard of different terms like pig butchering, uh, where different victims are are uh, are approached kind of via social media and things like that um, to uh, uh, to transfer different funds in all sorts of different ways. And we work with many different chains to give them visibility across their ecosystem, integrate with var various different kind of interfaces that are on those chains, um, detect various different threats across markets contracts, and things like that. We've already uh, scanned billions and billions of transactions across many different wallets we work with and many different protocols that we, de that we protect. Um, we've stopped hundreds of millions of, of attacks, some of these very, very small, um, but happen very, very frequently, and some of these very, very large. Um, and we've protected billions and billions of dollars worth of assets across many of these different protocols. Um, again, right, scanning. Uh, tons and tons of tons of these kind of different transactions and different kinds of uh, malicious activity that are taking place. In fact, some of that work has even been documented by different types of attackers, right? So a lot of our team spends a lot of time um, integrating uh, into different types of communication channels that these attackers use in order to communicate, right? What you can see here are different screenshots that our, our team has taken from various different kind of private channels on Telegram or Discord used by different attackers across different ecosystems. Um, one of these groups, very notoriously named uh, Inferno Drainer, um, you know, they've been able to uh, you know, steal tens of millions of dollars uh, even boasting as much as $80 million in a single year uh, up until our integration with MetaMask. Um, and our work, with, our work with MetaMask, as well as kind of other different kind of uh, uh, wallets and different type of types of kind of uh, projects across the space, has resulted in uh, uh, hurting kind of how these attackers operate on a day-to-day -day basis, right? In fact, we've even kind of been attributed in, in, in making, uh, making them ultimately stop or kind of change their operations in all sorts of different ways. And these are super, super meaningful businesses, right? Um, I don't know another company in crypto or many other companies in crypto is making $80 million a year. Um, so this is very significant. This hurts them a lot. And, uh, um, and you can see that, that from, from, from their kind of covert conversations. I guess it's ran out of battery. Can we hit the next slide? No worries. That's great. So maybe I'll share more about Inferno Drainer as we wait for uh, the backup clicker. Um, so. Um, yeah, so uh, as you can, as, as you probably OK, <laughs> all good. Um, so as with many of these different types of attackers, um, these different groups kind of communicate in all sorts of covert channels, and they ultimately create this type of economy across um, their, their, their different infrastructure, right? One of these groups in front of that we mentioned um, ultimately creates um, a, a malicious type of kind of 
SDK, right? That SDK is embedded across many different sites and distributed across many different ecosystems. Um, and, and that's how kind of these wallet trainers, as well as other types of groups, operate, right? Um, it's only one of kind of the, the verticals that we target and we work on, but many of these different groups ultimately um, uh, create these, these different types of, um, of, of SDKs, they embed them in different sites, and they use them to you know, share funds in different ways. And you can monitor and see those types of activities on chain, right? So when an Inferno Drainer uh, embeds its various different kind of SDKs into you know, a fake site, um, you'll see some of those funds moving to some of the attacker, uh, to, to them essentially on chain, and then you'll see some of those funds moving to, it's working out, I don't know. Okay, should be working, thank you. Uh, and you'll see some of those funds uh, moving to kind of, you know, people who redistribute and do all sorts of these different things. Um, and so uh, today, we're excited to announce um, our work with Stellar and our partnership with them. And it's still not working. Uh, okay, no, there we go, there we go. Uh, and our partnership with them. Um, so maybe before we dive into exactly what we're doing with Stellar, we'll share a little bit of the prerequisites and kind of how this partnership came to be and, and some of the work that we've been doing kind of uh, pre-leading to it in order to kind of share a little bit more about some of, uh, uh, some of the challenges and some of the risks, right? Um, so Stellar, like many of the leading kind of blockchains across the space, suffers from uh, symptoms of success, right? Um, when, when blockchain scale, when users use them, many different types of attackers take notice. Um, and ultimately, you know, Stellar, with this kind of success, has brought on uh, the attention of many of these different types of bad actors. Um, in a report uh, constructed by Blockade uh, several months before kind of uh, integrating and launching with Stellar, um, we were able to see that over $7 million was stolen uh, in just three months by one of these different groups. Um, the leading group across this space uh, targeting Stellar specifically is QSI. You can see with almost 80% market share across various different scams and malicious activity taking place on chain, but there's other smaller groups um, and malicious kind of activity that's also happening. Um, and this malicious activity is, is, is pretty prominent, right? Um, it takes up, um, um, in terms of uh, activity, uh, a large percentage of, uh, uh, of some of the activity that's happening on chain because these attackers are so successful in their means and their ways to operate and do all sorts of these different kind of malicious activities. And like I was saying, right, um, this is a symptom of success, right? It's not because crypto is innately bad, and it's not because any one of these chains is innately kind of less secure or more secure than anyone, than anyone or other, um, but it's because, you know, crypto makes money move like data. Um, and the fact that money moves like data makes it much, much more easy for attackers to move that money in all sorts of different ways. Um, and so from an attacker's perspective, when they go and kind of decide where, they go, where they're going to spend their time, where they're going to you know, construct these types of operations, they look at crypto as, as a means to an end, uh, but just faster, right? Um, when you think about the attack path for all sorts of different types of malicious activity that has happened kind of in traditional, more so um, cyber-related operations, an attacker needs to first kind of construct all sorts of different um, exploits and um, find vulnerabilities, uh, which, which are kind of similar to how, how kind of this goes about in crypto, but then they have to weaponize those, building malware, deploying that malware, running operations, moving within networks, doing all sorts of kind of, um, um, uh, uh, you know, things that are rel relatively very time consuming uh, in order to, you know, ultimately extract value. Um, and in crypto, you can find a vulnerability, right, uh, Muli and, uh, um, and Robert and some of the others kind of before here were, were explaining, right, how kind of you go about finding these vulnerabilities. You can find these vulnerabilities, but they ultimately result in, in, in funds as opposed to resulting in code execution, which results in a very, very long form operation. Um, and so, that's why these attackers kind of target the space, because it just moves money much, much more easily. And so what are we doing about it? Uh, and what are some of the, what's some of the work that we've been working on with Stellar uh, in order to kind of stop and prevent some of these different, different types of malicious activity? So today, we're excited to announce Blockade's security platform launching on Stellar um, with a couple initial kind of partners. Um, but we're really excited to continue to work with many more across the ecosystem to continue to support it. And those first two launch partners are Lobster and Freighter. Come on, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. OK, very, very cool. We'll show a couple more demos on how kind of uh, Freighter and how Lobster have integrated parts of Blockade. Some uh, talk a little bit more about, ab about how kind of you know, these security solutions have helped them out and spend a little bit of time talking about what's next and how kind of we can continue to work with you know, some of the broader ecosystem. 
there's awesome a video here. So what we're going to see here is a quick video of uh, our integration with Freighter. What you can see here is a malicious app. We'll talk through what this malicious app means in a second, but before then, we'll show you kind of some of the new features that Freighter has launched in order to kind of uh, emphasize and show users, you know, how uh, um, um, what not to do when interacting with these. That was pretty fast. We can play it again real quick, and I'll walk you through it. Um, so. Again, kind of these malicious apps, how they operate is, again, kind of looking like very, very similar different types of applications, right? Um, they have different types of malicious SDKs behind the scenes that kind of query a wallet, prompt them, and kind of uh, explore what different types of transactions uh, they should prompt the user in order to, um, um, to steal as much funds as possible, right? And so they construct this type of transaction. They send that to the wallet. That wallet, uh, without blockade, presents kind of a transaction screen that's ultimately very, very difficult to parse and understand. What we can see with Freighter is them kind of very, very clearly explaining to a user, hey, you shouldn't sign this. Um, this is a malicious transaction. It'll drain your wallet. Lobster has also done a great job integrating blockade. Um, first and foremost, through kind of detecting malicious transactions. Again, we'll see kind of um, a, uh, a quick video here, specifically kind of of sending addresses to a specific malicious address. You'll see that you know a user plugs in some uh, um, um, plugs in the different kind of amounts of funds that that they want to send. Uh, they'll continue and ultimately attempt to send these funds to, again, some sort of scammer or some sort of malicious actor. And we'll see kind of, again, that, that notification. We'll run this through a little bit. Oh, whoops. Um, and we'll see that notification uh, come up and share kind of with the user that they shouldn't kind of continue and they shouldn't kind of uh, sign these funds in different ways. And so both, both Freighter and both um, Lobster have integrated Blockade's transaction scanning APIs. Um, and in the coming months, they'll also work on integrating um, our malicious token detection as well as uh, DAP scanning endpoints in order to make sure that they're protecting users across the entire, um, the entire kind of uh, uh, scan with various different levels of defense in depth in order to make sure that users aren't kind of uh, interacting with, with these kind of different things. And so behind the scenes, how this looks like for the various different teams that integrate Blockade's platform is something like this, right? Um, and so really a bird's eye view of everything that's happening kind of on chain with their users, with their ecosystems, uh, with the different kind of protocols they're interacting with, and with the various different types of threats uh, that enable use, that, that could potentially hurt users in different ways, right? So both uh, the Lobster, the Freighter, and various different teams on Stellar um, on the ecosystem have access to this dashboard, this overview of everything that's going on, ability to kind of see various different incidents, both those that are taking place through their wallet specifically, but also their various different smart contracts, as we mentioned, right? Blockade's platform is much larger and much broader than just kind of working with these, with these, uh, uh, with these wallets. Um, this is kind of, these are our first two kind of launch partners, but we're doing much more across the space, and we're doing much more across various other ecosystems in order to continue to protect them from various different on-chain threats. And so, you know, by working with Stellar, by working with many of these teams, we think that by building better security solutions, we're enabling kind of broader and better trust, right? Uh, that bigger trust will lead to, you know, more adoption, and, and more adoption is what we're all here for. Um, and so, you know, we're super, super excited to work with Stellar, work with Lobster, work with Freighter, but also work with many of you here at, you know, uh, um, um, the, this kind of developer track, uh, you know, building on Stellar, building on Chain uh, to protect and monitor and secure your various different assets that are taking place um, and your various different kind of smart contracts and infrastructure that you're building on Chain. Um, we, we've shared a little bit about some of the work that we're doing. There's a lot more. Um, we're, we're here all week or until Thursday, um, and we're walking around. You'll see kind of uh, uh, myself, my co-founder Roz, uh, Shahar is here with us as well, uh, wearing blockade shirts. We're walking around. We're excited to talk to you, to builders that are building kind of on Stellar about security, about how we're thinking about things, about how you're thinking about things, and how maybe you could leverage blockade to make sure that it's just all that more secure. Um, um, and, uh, um, and exciting to kind of build and work on Stellar. Um, so I guess uh, uh, thanks. Like I said, I'm Ido. Uh, I know uh, I was asked to leave some time for Q&As at the end. I hope it's enough. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, so feel free um, if you guys have any questions um, or reach out after uh, and we can chat. Awesome.